Greetings from Unity World Headquarters at Unity Village. That's our new title, and I have a hard time getting it out. And I have the pleasure to serve there now as the full-time faculty member for spiritual education enrichment, and teaching is my passion. And so when I give a lesson, I tend to teach. And I have an online radio program called Metaphysical Romp 2, and this is how I begin it. It's another beautiful day in my consciousness. Will you, will you join me in knowing that? It's another beautiful day in my consciousness. Because you see that that very core of your beingness cannot be altered, cannot be changed. It's the truth of what you are. Whether you call it Christ or God, divine, infinite potential, no, no matter what you name it or call it or what your experience of it is, it's unchangeable. Wow. It's another beautiful day in my consciousness. Together? It's another beautiful day in my consciousness. All right. So let's get rolling. So if we can have the slides, please. I'm going to share a talk with you I call, It Ain't Cotton Candy. Because often unity gets what I call a little bit of a bad rap of being like soft spirituality. So next slide. So you see, unity is not like cotton candy and it's not fluff if you really understand it. And that's one of the reasons why I was always challenging my instructors. Because I knew of this depth. And often, we float along the top of the surface and not really dig in. When Myrtle and Charles Fillmore, our co-founders, were all about digging in. Okay? So today, next slide. We're going to be talking about, at the very end, fake it till you make it. It is what it is. Count it all good. Because you see, these are affirmations we say, but we say them so often, we're we just bouncing along this, the surface. Next slide. But what about the dark side? What about the shadow work? You've heard of that, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Next slide, please. please. So, <laughs> do you ever wake up like that? Okay. That's how I feel sometimes inside. I call it my ugly twin. Okay. Any, any of you have an ugly twin? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, it used to be when my ugly twin showed up, I did this. Next slide. <laughs> you know, I acted like... I wasn't feeling uh, inside. And so when I invested energy doing this to hide this, I didn't have any energy left to really do anything else. In fact, I first started to learn about this in my dental practice because I would show up at work knowing I had gotten up at the, on the wrong side of the bed. And so I would come into my dental practice and I had, had two employees and I'd sit them down and I'd say, look, the ugly twin here is here today. <laughs> so if I bark at you or snap at you or do anything like that, it's not about you, it's about me. And the truth is, I only have about this much nice today, and that's going to the patients. <laughs> have you ever had a day like that? Yeah, yeah. So, so for them, what it, what it did in just admitting it, it kind of released some of the energy, so I wasn't having to hide it, right? And so that made it easier in a way to deal with. Next slide. So let me just give you some quick metaphysics here. So the truth of what we are is that blue circle. The Christ, the I am, God self, higher self, whatever you want to call it, okay? And, and then we hide it, we cover it up, we add to it for some strange reason with who I think I am, who I'm afraid I am. You know, don't we go around thinking more about our personalities and our egos? Do, do you do that? I do that, okay? And then because of that evil twin, I create a pretend self, and that pretend self shifts and changes according to the environment. Does anybody do that? <laughs> okay, all right. And then the really fun one I realized I did was called spiritual icing. So when I first got to a unity church, and I saw people, maybe a person like that, and 
they're radiant and they're smiling and they're full of grace and ease. Well, I put that on like a jacket. Okay? So I, I, it's like I slathered on this spiritual icing to hide that evil twin. Okay? But guess what would happen if you just crossed me a little bit? <laughs> no more icing. Okay? <laughs> evil twin was le left out the play. So what we're going to talk about a little bit today is this process. You ready for that? You ready to take a little bit of a romp? Okay, go. Next slide. So our co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore, said this. So she had this ailment. You all know but basically her history. She had lots of ailments until she discovered the truth of her own divinity. She said, the trouble she had did not respond to ordinary faith and prayer. Well, statements like that make me pause and go, well, what's extraordinary faith and prayer, you know? So, but what did she mean? She says, I finally asked the Lord just why it was that I did not get well. Now, when we read that, I finally asked the Lord, what do you hear? You hear, I hear Myrtle talking to an outside God, right? However, Myrtle said, God is not a being with parts like a man. God is principle. God is mind. So we can know that she wasn't talking to something outside herself. She was talking to the Lord of her beingness, her higher self. I mean, doesn't your personality talk to itself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the time. It's a good thing because you don't want to hear some of the things it says, right? <laughs> but so, so I envision this, and this is, I do this in my own life. I have conversations with my higher self. I don't believe that the higher self is a being. I don't believe that it's something separate. However, it's a useful tool. It's a useful tool. Just as when my personality seems to be two beings talking to itself, I don't for a minute believe there's two. Now, if you believe there's two, I'm sure there's a good psychiatrist in town. Okay? All right. So she says, I explained to the Lord that I had gone all through my consciousness. So you see, she's exploring herself to see what it was that held me and that I had tried to find the fault. See, this is doing the work. This is looking at the dark side. This is looking at those aspects of consciousness that can hold us back. Next slide. So then, then she hears her higher self say, you have looked among your faults. Now look among your virtues. Wow. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Look among your virtues. I could just see Myrtle going, what? <laughs> My virtues? Next. She said, I had tried to keep my feelings to myself, taking great, great, great pride in the fact that I never let anyone know just how I felt when anything displeased or hurt me. Sound familiar? Yeah. 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 I found that I did not feel as sweet and poised on the inside as I seemed outwardly. See, we're back to the, everything's fine, you know. <laughs> My ugly twin isn't here. <laughs> Next. So this unity process is all about self-awareness and self-knowledge. However, from our ego side, where do we go next? Self-condemnation, right? Next slide. So Charles Fillmore said, judging from the plane of the personal leads into condemnation. Haven't you noticed that? The plane of the personal is really that plane of appearances. And condemnation is always followed by the fixing of the penalty. Have you noticed that? That we some, sometimes punish ourselves. <laughs> the thoughts that most frequently work ill to you and your associates are thoughts of criticism and condemnation. How much do we do that? Okay? And how much more do I do that when guess who's in town? My evil twin. <laughs> Next. So this whole process of self-condemnation really figures around this concept of metaphysical guilt and metaphysical malpractice. You see, when I use truth, when I use the principles, the laws, and divine ideas in 
untoward ways or ways strictly from my ego, I start to feel guilty. I go into self-condemnation. And friends, that's metaphysical malpractice. And sometimes we see others doing it to themselves and then we might inappropriately say, gee, what were you holding in consciousness that caused you to be sick? Or have you heard of that? Okay? that that's malpractice. These laws and principles that are so vital to the unity movement and for each of us living a happy and full life are all about working on our own consciousness, not telling other people what to do for theirs. Okay? Next. So Charles Hilmer said, we need to free our mind. So free your mind of thoughts of condemnation by holding the thought, there is now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Fill your mind with thoughts of divine love, justice, peace, and forgiveness. So part of the process is shifting from that condemnation to realizing more the truth you are. But that isn't the only thing you do. Because if that's all we do, then it's more that spiritual icing. We're doing a spiritual bypass, a spiritual band-aid. Next. So the unity process is about self-awareness, self-knowledge, self but forget self-condemnation. We got to get to self-acceptance. Sometimes we think if we accept ourselves just the way that we are, we're not going to do anything about it. But the truth is, when I move into self-acceptance, I can now be more fully aware of it rather than pushing against it. Okay? Because what we push against in consciousness grows in our awareness. It gets bigger. Okay? Now, this resistance can be a good thing in the outer realm. You see, what I've discovered is the laws of consciousness do not work exactly the same way out in the physical realm. If I push against something in consciousness, it grows. But we have ample evidence that when we resist some evil or something erroneous in the outer realm, we can make it change. Do you see the difference? So Martin Luther King did not go into non-resistance about all the wild and crazy and inappropriate laws we had in this country against African Americans. He resisted it, didn't he? Yeah. So it's important not to confuse the spiritual laws and how they work in consciousness with how laws work in the outer realm. You with me? Okay, I mean, it should be obvious to us all. I can clean out my garage in consciousness in a heartbeat. It may never happen in the outer realm. But if, it, if I do it, it takes forever. Okay, so next slide. So then what did Myrtle do? So Myrtle tells us, she says, I began to watch and redeem this state of mind. I determined to handle all that came to me before I swallowed it. You see? That self-awareness, self-knowledge, self-acceptance. I, I acknowledged it. I noticed that this is the way I am. Are you with me? You know, and she's noticing it's coming from her dark side, her shadow self. Myrtle's evil twin. Okay? And she says, as I gained real poise, not the icing, and the ability to keep my thoughts and feelings truly free, I was healed and restored to strength and normal functioning. See, she's described a process here that if we find things in our consciousness or in our physical bodies that don't cord with, do not ag agree with our na innate divinity, then our job is to acknowledge it and deal with it. And how do we deal with it? Next slide. Affirmations and denials. 
I'm sure Beth has shared with you about affirmations. They, they are positive statements, they are possibility statements, and more importantly, they should be realization statements. What's a realization statement? That's when you know that you know something is true, even though your outer circumstances aren't necessarily demonstrated. Have you had that feeling sometime where you know that you know something is true, right? Okay, that's when we get to an affirmation. Now, if you're saying, saying negative affirmations like, I'm no good, you're using the same law, you'll get, the, you'll get the negative effect. In fact, I call negative affirmations defamations. Okay, we're, defa we're defaming our natural innate divinity when we're, when we're doing all that bad talk about ourselves. And the denial is all about cleaning up our consciousness, that negative thinking, okay? It's about not giving any power to those thoughts anymore. There's only one power and one presence. You're it. If you're not it, then, then you're making up that there is an opposing power. You are the one power, the one presence, some way, somehow, at the depths of your innate beingness. And when we give power to those negative thoughts, we got to become aware of them. We don't condemn them, we accept them, and then we clean them up with a denial followed by an affirmation. If you say, I'm no good, you have to say, I give no more power to that thought. I am whole. I am perfect. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Now, another way in which unity is not cotton candy is this thing called chemicalization. Okay? Chemicalization. So, in the New Age movement, I'm sure you've heard this. In the New Age movement, it basically says, when you start to clean up your consciousness and work with the principles and laws, your life gets better. Did you ever heard that? Yeah. Well, Unity says that when you start to clean up your consciousness, you can cause some turmoil of those thoughts that are deep within you that oppose that new thought, that new truth you're claiming, and it's going to cause something called chemicalization. That's where you might, you could have physical upset, you could mess with your sleeping, either sleep too much or sleep too little. But what this says is, is that when you really are working the principles, it may not feel quite so good in the beginning. But the good news is that means it's working. Keep working. New Age, New Age says if you hit opposition, what do you do? You stop. That you must be doing something wrong. So I have this not very ministerial um, affirmation. <laughs> when I know I'm in chemicalization, and it's, I'm so happy I feel crappy. <laughs> Right, right? Yeah, because I know the crappiness is the signal that I'm doing the work, that these negative thoughts and feelings are being chemicalized, dislodged in my consciousness so I can clear them. Okay? So unity is about this wonderful process of using divine ideas, divine laws, affirmations, and denials to recondition our consciousness, to recondition our minds, to recondition our awareness. So next slide. So fake it until you make it is a fluff statement, but faith it until you make it is a statement of truth, right? Because when you say an affirmation, which, which doesn't seem to be true, you're not saying it to make it true, you're saying it because you know it's already true in your divine condition, not in your ego condition. Well, it is what it is, is a good statement because that's acceptance, right? It is what it is. However, a lot of people stop there. Well, you know, it is what it is. It becomes like resigning to a condition, okay? But new thought, unity new thought says, it is what you name it. It is what you call it. 
Because however you name it, or however you call it, through that law of mind action, where the thoughts you hold in mind duplicate in your consciousness, you begin to center your consciousness around what you want it to be. You with me? So you're not fighting against it, you're just saying, this is what I want it to be. Okay? Now that takes a bit of a, of a strong spiritual constitution. Okay? That even though I have this bad thing in my life, I can name it good. But when we name it good, we're not saying the bad thing is good. We're saying that because I am the divine, I am the one power and presence, everything is raw material to produce good. To produce a blessing. You see, that's our function. In one level, is to use our divine nature, to use the divine ideas and laws and principles, to not only to enhance our consciousness and to live from a more spiritual state of awareness, but it's also to bless others. Isn't that the coolest thing? Yes. <laughs> so, so our work is not to cover up our evil twins. Our work is to accept that aspect of ourselves and then from that point of view, call it good, and start using it in ways in which you can be more effectively the one presence and one power you already are. Because the truth is, you're it. I'm it. And so it is. Thank you for being here.